Hello, and welcome back to Seaside Garage. After fitting the electronic ignition, I drove this car. Not very far because I didn't have really have anywhere to go. I just wanted to test that it worked and it was just fine. Then the day after, I wanted to take it on a longer on a longer trip. Turned it on. And there was absolutely no oil pressure on the engine at all, according to the gauge. It's both a pressure gauge and a control light, two different systems. So to have two sensors to indicate that there is no oil pressure at all is not good. It isn't the same location though. What I did was I switched it off quickly, took out the spark plugs, removed the oil sensor, turned it over on the starter motor. There came absolutely no oil out of the inlet for the oil pressure sensor. Then I took out the oil filter and, sp and spun it over on the key once more. No oil came out of the oil filter in inlet. And yes, I did check if there is oil in the engine. There's plenty of oil in the engine. That's not an issue. The engine was running pretty nicely when I started it, but I did have a pretty weird sound from the engine. It was just for a brief moment. My best description was the sound of a wheel bearing being completely worn out. It sounded like it was coming from Sulana number three area. Um, but I just turned it off. I knew at that point that the only way forward was to take this engine out because no matter what, I need to find out what went on and I need to assess if any damage occurred. Because even though it was only on for very briefly without oil pressure, I was driving a little bit, not a lot, but having, an, having no oil pressure in an engine will wear it out extremely quickly. So I could be in deep, deep troubles with this. It's a really weird thing having oil pressure completely disappear. Normally it will go lower, lower, lower and until it reaches a critical level. Then it will start to wear out all the, uh, the bearings really quickly, which will in turn turn the oil pressure even lower. I have never ever experienced oil pressure disappear completely from normal to none whatsoever. Something is wrong. My guess is that something went horribly wrong with the oil pump, but all I can do is to remove the oil, remove the oil pan and check it out. And then I'm gonna assess the bearings because if the bearings are toast, then I will have to do a rebuild on this engine. Hopefully the crank is not toast though, but let's take one step at a time. These are solid engines. So, so I'm not gonna rule anything out right now. Maybe it's just another oil pump. Maybe something is stuck in there. I, I just have no idea. All I know is the oil pump is driven on the same axis or axle as the distributor. And I have been fitting that up and down a million times, but the distributor is still running. So I don't think it's the gears on that pulley down there, but uh, I just don't know. Let's take this engine apart. So now let's do this. I'm gonna start by draining out the oil and I'm gonna use a completely clean catch can. That way I can assess the, the oil for, uh, for metal shavings and all that a bit easier. I hope it's just clean, but I am fearing that it's not. This is good news. I wasn't expecting that. The oil looks perfectly fine. Black, but perfectly fine. 
I'm not surprised it's black because I have had a lot of running issues with this because of the ignition. So there has been a lot of choke starts and rich runnings and it has not been real hot for a long time, a couple of weeks. But um, so moisture and blackness was expected, not water, of course. The water would have come out first because the oil will lay on top of the water. So I'm not expecting a head gasket issue just yet, at least. But remember, it's the oil pressure that went away. So I'm pretty sure I'm looking at, at some kind of de defect or blockage in the oil pump area. Best case scenario right now is that I take off the sump, discover a damaged oil pump, changes that, change that, and all is good. I am going to inspect at least the, the, uh, the journals on the crank to make sure it's not worn out because of running without oil. But best case, a new oil pump and back in the car. I also received the new gearbox, so I can actually change that as well and get all gears working, hopefully. So uh, this might end up being a good thing. <laughs> Take a look at this oil. I am shining a light from the top and I'm not seeing any metal flakes. I see what could look like metal is bubbles. I think it picks up on the camera, uh, but there is nothing uh, too worrying right here. If there was a lot of bearing material, material in the oil, it would come out like a starry night sky or like the Milky Way, actually. Um, there's nothing that indicates a complete bearing failure at all. So this is good news. It's time to find out what's going on with the oil pressure. At first glance, I don't see anything obviously wrong. So right now I have two thoughts going on in my head. Either the impeller for some reason is not turning in the oil pump, or maybe there gotta be a pressure relief valve somewhere in the system. Maybe that's completely stuck open. So it just relieves all the, the pressure. I don't know if that's a possibility. On this one, would have be a pretty bad error at least. But I think I'm just gonna remove the oil pump by this and by this, because then I can take it apart without us disassembling it to begin with, because I would really like to find something wrong. And if it's something that just dislodges, then, uh, then maybe it won't show. I did tell you that I thought this could be self-inflicted and it turns out that it is very much a possibility. I just thought that I checked that. Well, you're going to have to see this even though I would like to, to pretend that nothing happened. Notice how the shaft is not touching the sprocket down there. It's just not, the sprocket has pushed itself upwards. Um, this was the first thing that I checked for because I have been messing so much with the distributor. I thought that maybe that has came dislodged and pushed upwards, but I checked it and I was pretty sure that I couldn't put it back together without it being in its position, but that's, I, Jesus Christ, I think that's the, uh, the problem. Jesus Christ. This is, this could turn out to be a waste of time, other than I can get the gearbox in a little bit easier, but, <laughs> and maybe I don't have to buy another engine, but still, this is surprising me quite a lot that it's possible to get it 
be honest, I really hope it's just snapped down there, but it doesn't look that way. I will have to flip the engine and check the other side. If you wonder why I am slightly silent at the moment, it is because I might took out this engine for no reason at all. Paul nu kæft, man. Okay, det er skidt. Okay, so the issue is self-inflicted, but I'm not gonna take full responsibility of this error. <laughs> okay, so I changed the distributor for the uh, electronic ignition module that I was gifted by my part supplier because he accidentally sent me the wrong coil for the old system, which ended up frying the, uh, the parts for this. I was really grateful for that, but unfortunately, We have an issue. The shaft on the electronic ignition distributor is one and a half centimeters shorter than the right one. So why is this a problem? This is a problem because this one goes into the engine and is turned by this little sprocket. This little sprocket, I think fits like this. And then it's driven by another sprocket that is also dri driving the fuel pump, by the way, and in turn is turned by the crankshaft. Underneath this one is another shaft that goes into the oil pump. So when that spins, it delivers pressure to the oil system. What was puzzling me a lot, because this was my first thought that maybe something was wrong in that region, but if this one is turning, I would expect the fuel, the oil pump to turn as well. But because this is shorter, it's possible for this drive to go up one and a half centimeter, still have contact with the sprocket that turns down there, which means that the car will still have a working ignition system, but it will lose contact to the oil pump completely. No oil pressure at all. This explains another thing that I don't think I actually told you, but when I started up the car after fitting the electronic ignition, I had a flickering oil light. I shut the engine off, checked all connections, started it up again, and the oil pressure was completely normal. No flashing light, and it was reading, I think it's three or four bars at idle or something like that. I'm not counting on it being very precise. Then I took it for a drive a bit up the road, then the oil pressure disappeared again, and I was actually pretty sure in my mind that it was something electric because it's so weird. So I just turned the car around, not being in a hurry, drove it back in here, and I took my oil pressure gauge, fitted that to the car, and it showed me, and I turned it on again, and it showed me that the engine had absolutely no oil pressure. Then I took up, off, as I told you, the oil fills and turned it on the key only, without ignition, making just the starter motor do the, uh, the work. No oil came out, and then I stopped turning that engine over. But this one has just been moving up and down a little bit in turn, sometimes giving the car a little bit of oil pressure, sometimes not. And um, it could, this is serious because this error is one error. Of course, it's a problem. I need another one. Um, I could have damaged the engine. I'm going to check the bearings. Of course, I expect somewhere it's an engine from maybe the 70s. It seems to be rebuilt or maybe new, actually. Everything looks so nice in here. But um, I'm gonna check them. Hopefully there is no damage. Hopefully the oil film has been enough to just protect the bearings and nothing has happened. I'm not the one to get extremely angry about this. I know the guy I bought these parts from. I know this is a mistake. It is very unfortunately the second mistake in a row which is really not great, um, but I'm sure we'll figure something out. Luckily, I think this is a lot of fun. I am doing this because I like it, doing stuff in the garage, and I do this because I like making videos. And this is <laughs> at least a very exciting video both to make and to, uh, and to show you guys, so that's a good thing. But nonetheless, yeah, something needs to be done. I would like to add one thing though. Yes, this is a mistake made by the supplier, 
but it's also a mistake made by myself because it's very important to check the parts you get. And I know this, but I was just expecting stuff to be right for some reason. But it's just so important to check your parts, check that the diameter of shafts is the same and the length and all that. I should have done that. So as expected, there is nothing wrong with the oil pump. At first glance, at least, I can measure the clearance and so on, but I don't have any reason to expect that this is not working. I'd, I'd say that is just completely fine. It is also looking fine. I can't feel anything. If you can catch your nail on anything on these, it will be completely gone. But you don't you want it to be completely smooth down there. Um, yes, you could use plastic gauge to check if the clearance are all right and all that. But that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for damage caused by low oil pressure. So I'm not looking for long-term wear on the crankshaft. Um, this is fine as well. I haven't found anything worrying so far. But I noticed this, I just checked out one of the bearing shells a bit closer. All the bearing shells got the, the riding 025 written on the, on the rear. I think that is one oversize, I'm not sure, but I think it is. Another giveaway is that there are different kinds of markings on the uh, conrods. But one really weird thing is that this is punched with two numbers on each shell, making sure that you that you put them together together, so you don't swap them around. But you would suspect this to be number two or number three, I'm not really sure. But this is stamped number one, this is stamped number two, this is stamped number four, and this is stamped number three. So something has been, maybe not, I, I don't think it's been mixed up, but another way of doing it has been done. So I think this has been rebuilt. The caps also are marked with some punching marks, could be from factory, I'm not sure. But I think this engine is rebuilt. That explains why it seems to be in such a good condition and the overall compression and all that is good. Looking down into the bars, I can see some markings going up and down, but, but it doesn't seem to be too bad. I've seen a lot worse on, uh, on engines. Okay, so it's a day later. I had to contact the supplier of, uh, of the parts, of course, to figure out what to do from here. And now I'm finished up with the assessment of the engine. All big end bearings are looking perfect. There is nothing, there's no wear on those. It's just, I'd say it's perfect. Remember, I'm not an expert, but I would say it's perfect. The crankshaft bearings though, I don't like the look of them. You're supposed to not be able to catch your nail on anything on the lobes, but I can feel wear marks, especially on this over here. I can actually feel a groove. It's not visible, but the bearing end caps also tell a story of, uh, of wear. The aluminum on the sides of those has been worn. I'm going to try to show you. I'm sure it's going to be really difficult to show on camera because yeah, it's just difficult to, to pick up, I think, but I will try. This is one of the big end bearings and you can maybe see that it's completely smooth. I hope you can. But on these, maybe you can see the stripes. It's not really... F it's really difficult, but... This one, I think, will be visible. Can you see the middle line in this bearing? It's not looking too nice. This one also. It's really difficult to focus on. And especially this one, I can feel a groove right there going all around just beside the groove in the bearing, actually. This is the worst bearing shell. And as you can see, at least in my opinion, they look 
brand new until really recently <laughs> because it seems to be in really good condition and then there is the marks on the corner right there this one also got, got some pretty bad scuffing marks this one is okay-ish I'd say this one also got wear marks this one is okay-ish as well the big end I only removed two of them looks all right I think now I'm no engine expert at all but I have worked for a short while at an engine rebuilder and learned a lot of tricks and tips from a from a really experienced builder and your fingers are able to feel an unevenness down to uh, the thickness of a of of half the thickness of a hair actually so it's actually a good tool for measuring unevenness you will be able to feel it and i can feel something there nothing really there a little bit here not much here quite a lot on this one um i can catch my nail a little bit on this one on this one and on this one other than this i also got some scratching marks on the boss as well i think that could be up uh, be normal wear remember it turns out that this engine has been rebuilt before and the crank has been grinded down to one oversize new bearings fitted uh, but maybe they didn't do much to the boss itself maybe a quick hone or something like that but um i say i'd say i risk having oil pressure issues if i put this engine back together i think it will wear itself out really quickly uh, and i think this is down to the fact that um, this engine was running without oil pressure it's really a shame i have been doing a lot of thinking for the last 24 hours and i remember then when i started this engine up the first time after installing the electronic ignition i started it up using my remote starter because i wanted to set the ignition right with the strobe light so i had to warm the engine up in that period of time i did not look at the oil gauge inside of the car because i had no reason to expect oil pressure to disappear so maybe i'm not sure but maybe it didn't have any oil pressure for that complete warm-up circle after that i took it for a drive noticed the oil pressure was missing down the road i think it came on down the road but i can't be sure but worst case scenario this engine has been running for maybe 10 minutes maybe 15 minutes without oil pressure and has been up to 80 kilometers per hour and so on so damage is of course a possibility and remember i did hear a weird sound coming from the solander 3 num area i don't see anything obvious that would make a sound but i have not looked at the camshaft yet and uh, to be honest i need to inspect the boss proper before saying anything about the overall condition of that area it could have uh, maybe snapped a ring i don't know but either way this engine or the crankshaft at least in the current state is toast it needs to be grinded down to another oversize or replaced um, of course i contacted my supplier the thing is that the distributor was put in a wrong box from the factory my supplier couldn't couldn't have known i should i couldn't have known of course we could have checked he could have checked i could have checked the matching the number on that part is matching a 1200 or 1300 lada engine which is slightly shorter in the block so uh, that's just the problem for some reason it fits together anyway which is really stupid in my opinion if this if just the splines were different this wouldn't be uh, something that could happen so but if i want to try to uh, get some, someone to to pay for the damage i would have to go after the factory the factory is a russian factory but i'm not going to get anything out of trying to get a russian company a factory to replace my engine or rebuild my engine it will just be a waste of time i won't i won't i won't chase that down um, also because i think it will end up being my problem that i did not check the oil pressure that i did not check the part 
and uh, yeah, it will just be a waste of time. My life is too short to be too angry about this. It's really annoying, especially since I was planning to sell this car. Um, I really enjoy engine rebuilds, so maybe it's time for one of those. And then I will have to take the ladder off, off the road. Another possibility is to find another engine. Um, right now, I just don't know what to do, to be honest. But uh, it's such a shame trying to do something good for your engine, putting in an electronic ignition and then ending up ruining that, ruining that engine. This is a big lesson for me to inspect parts. Anyway, good content for the channel after all. That's a good thing. Hmm. Thank you for watching and thank you for the support again on Patreon. And um, see you in the next one.